nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Welcome to Expo Tutorial. In the next half an hour or so, we will go through the main feature of S4 tool. So first of all, what is S4? S4 is a numerical solver developed by a group of researchers at Stanford. So in nanophotonics research, we basically investigate the interaction between light and optical structure. One important class of structure is stratified structure. As you can see in the schematic, um, such a structure consists of layered media in Z direction, and it has periodic patterns in the X, Y plane. To figure out what exactly happens inside the structure, we need to solve the Maxwell's equations rigorously. And S4 is such a numerical solver that solves Maxwell's equations and compute the transmission, reflection, and absorption spectra of such a structure. Let's go straight into an example, plane wave incident on air glass interface. So here on the left-hand side of the interface, we have air, and on the right-hand side, we have glass with a refractive index 1.5. So if we shine a light to this interface, at an angle theta i, we can imagine that part of the energy will reflect back at an angle theta r. And the reflectance is defined as the fraction of the incident power that is reflected from the interface. And from law of reflection, theta i is equal to theta r. And we can also imagine that the part of the energy must transmit through the interface and go to glass at an angle theta t. And the transmittance is defined as the fraction of the incident power that is refracted into the second medium. And from Snell's law, as long as we know the refractive indices of these two materials, we can find the relation between theta i and theta t. And the transmittance and reflectance of material interface can be calculated analytically. But before that, we need to introduce one more concept that is polarization. So um, if we imagine the trajectory of the incoming light and the normal vector of the interface can form a plane of incidence. And S polarization, or sometimes called TE polarization, is defined as the case where electric field is perpendicular to the plane of incidence. And on the right hand side, uh, on, the, on the left hand side schematic, the plane of incidence is simply this light or, or a screen. And we can see that uh, the electric field is pointing toward you out of the plane while the magnetic field H is inside this plane. On the other hand, for the P polarization, electric field is parallel to the plane of incidence. As, as you can see in the right-hand side schematic, E field is in the plane, while H field is out of the plane, pointing toward you. And it turns out that the refle reflectance and transmittance for the P and S polarization are different. Here on the top left, we show the formula for both reflectance. And on the right-hand side, we plot the reflectance and transmittance for two polarizations. So if we look at the blue dashed line, the reflectance of S polarization increase monotonically from a small number to unity with increasing angle of incidence from zero to 90 degree. While the red dashed line, the reflectance of P polarization undergoes a decrease down to almost zero at around 56 degree 
and then increase to unity at the 90 degree incidence. And this critical angle is called Brewster angle. And at this angle, the reflectance of P polarization is exactly zero. So this is the difference between S and P polarization in terms of single interface reflection. And in our real, real world, the natural light is, has a mixture of both polarizations. So if we do a measurement, the reflectance of the natural light is essentially the average between RS and RP. And now let's use S4 tool to check it out. We want to calculate the reflectance of both polarization at Bruce the angle. And uh, our expectation is that uh, for P polarization, the reflectance is very small. And for S polarization, it's, it's between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 at Bruce the angle. Okay, we have already opened up the S4 tool integrated on Nano Hub. So we first choose simulation option. We want to use graphical interface for our first example and hit, hit parameter. First of all, we need to define the materials. So in this um, example, we have two materials, air and uh, glass. So we select the number of materials two. The first material is predefined vacuum. The second material, since we are we already know that the reflect, uh, refractive index of glass is 1.5. So we choose set this material manually. And permittivity is the square of refractive index, so it's 2.25. Next, let's set the layer. So first of all, we, we should set basis vectors. However, in this example, we have no periodicity in the xy plane. So we don't really care about the basis vector. So we just leave it as the default value. And in this example, we have only two layers. The top layer vacuum is semi-infinite and the bottom layer glass is also semi-infinite. We don't have anything in the middle actually, but uh, in this graphical interface, it's by default, it forces us to define at least one layer in the middle. So uh, we can define this layer as the uh, same as uh, either top layer or bottom layer so that uh, it doesn't interfere with our calculation. So our top layer is made of material one and we don't want to copy the semi-infinite layer as bottom layer. and we want to get pointing flux in this layer and with a C offset zero. The bottom layer is made of material two and we want to get pointing flux in this layer, choose yes with C offset zero. Layer in the middle, we keep it as, uh, the same as the top layer material one and uh, we don't really care about the thickness. So we leave it as default value Next, let's set the simulation parameter. The max uh, Fourier expansion orders. In this example, we just choose one. And uh, let's set the excitation plane wave. In this example, we want to uh, we want the incident angle to be the Bruce angle, fifty six degree. We set phi to be six fifty six, and phi is the elevation angle running from zero to 180 degree, while theta is um, the azimuthal angle from zero to 360 degree. And we need to note that the, in S4 tool, the definition of phi and theta is opposite to our convention um, in spherical coordinate. So we need to pay extra attention to it. Don't get confused. So we first want to calculate the, uh, the reflection and transmission of S polarization. So we set the amplitude of P, uh, S polarization to be one 
the face, we set it to be default value zero. And we don't want any p polarization component set to be zero. And then the output frequency setting, the reduced unit period will leave it as default value. The wavelength range by default 300 nanometer to 840 nanometer is a step three. Smooth the resulting curve, we choose no. Okay, now let's hit simulate. Okay, here's the resulted curve. We can see three curves standing for um, incidence flux, reflection flux, and transmission flux, respectively. The horizontal axis is wavelengths running from 300 to 840. And the, the blue curve on the top is our incidence flux, which is one at all wavelengths. That makes sense because it automatically normalizes the total energy as one. And the green curve is the transmission flux, which is around 0 0.85. And the red curve down there is the reflection flux, which is about 0 0.15. It actually uh, meets our expectation because we, we know that uh, um, the reflectance of S polarization wave is uh, at first angle is around, is between 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Okay, now let's go back and do, redo the simulation for P polarization wave. We set the S polarization amplitude to be zero, P polarization amplitude to be one. And we redo the simulation. Okay, here's our result. Um, there are actually three curves, but uh, the green curve and the blue curve are too close to each other. And the red curve down there is the reflection flux, which is around 10 to the negative five order. It's basically neg negligible uh, because at boost angle, S polarization wave actually the, almost does not reflect back. So it meets our expectation.